Okay, we're going to finish up the end of chapter 17 and talk about what's called electrolysis um, to finish things up just a little bit. All right, so elect what are called electrolytic cells. So it's a little bit different. Remember, we had galvanic and voltaic cells. These use electrical energy to produce chemical changes. All right, now electrolysis is forcing a current through a cell to produce a chemical trade change that typically has a cell potential that is negative. So we're going to override that by using electrical energy to produce a chemical change. Um, for example, if this is our reaction where we're going to run it, um, we're going to just put our power source greater than 1.10 volts. This is the automatic version that flows this way. This has the net positive. Well, we're going to have to put a, great, a power source greater than 110 volts to reverse it and force it to go in the opposite direction. Okay. So now we can do some stoichiometry. Um, the way that we do stoichiometry, just to kind of show you a little time load over here, we have to find the product of the current and the time. We then have to use Faraday as a conversion factor to, in the current of the time, we're going to use the product to get to the charge. It's going to give us the charge. We're going to use Faraday as a conversion factor to go from charge to moles of electrons. We're going to use the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation to go from moles of electrons to moles of product. And then we use either molar mass or standard molar volume of a conversion as a conversion factor in order to get to grams or liters of a product. All right, so let's look at some of these. Um, what we can essentially figure out is how much, a how much of a chemical reaction will happen or how much product that we can generate based on the current the, the current that we have and the amount of time that we utilize that for. Um, the current is typically measured in amps. An amp is one current per second, um, and this is a lot of times called plating or electroplating, where we force an electric current and we get a solid to precipitate out of solution. And so this is where we deposit metal on an electrode by reducing metal ions. So again, we can kind of force this, what's called electroplating, to take place. All right, so how long, let's jump right into this, how long must a current of 5.0 amps be applied to a solution of silver ions in order to get to produce 10.5 grams of silver metal? All right, so this is the electro, the current, or the reaction rather, that we're going for. We're going to take silver metal, we're going to add enough electricity to generate, take silver ions rather, add enough current to generate silver metal, and we want 10.5 grams of it. Okay, so we're going to work backwards from the little flow chart that I just had. We go grams to moles plain old molar mass, and then for every one mole of silver, there's one mole of an electron for this particular substance. Okay, so now we realize that we need 9.73 times 10 to the negative second moles of electrons. Then we use our Faraday, which is right here, okay, and it's 96.485 coulombs per one mole of electron. So now we can go from moles to coulombs. Then we can use the ampere unit to go from coulombs to seconds. All right, and I guess technically we could have left it. It didn't say in seconds versus minutes. This one goes ahead and converts seconds to minutes because 31.3 minutes is a little bit more tangible than however many seconds that would be. Okay, and that's it. The only new, the only new parts here are the Faradays and the amperes, and then just doing moles of electrons to moles of product. But it's still a balanced chemical reaction. All right, now on the opposite, how many grams of copper would be placed out, would be plated out when 10 amps of current is passed through a solution of copper 2 for 30 minutes? So this is the very same type of problem. We're just going to reverse it. Don't, word to the wise, don't overthink it. People get here and they go, oh, this actually seems really simple. And it is really simple. So, so anyway, we do have to go from minutes to seconds because of the um, ampere unit, is coulombs per second. So we go from minutes to seconds. We then go from seconds to coulombs using the ampere. Okay, they're going to be given this is dependent on how much current is passing through. Then we use the Faraday, and that gets us to 1.87 times 10 to the negative first moles of electrons. Now for this particular reaction, we're dealing with copper 2. Okay, we're going to go from copper 2 to regular old copper and we need two electrons. So that's why we have two moles of electrons for every one mole of copper. Then we just do the molar mass of copper to figure out that we would have 5.94 grams of copper. Okay, and that's it. That's how many grams of copper that we would have. So again, they're not truly difficult, brand new, crazy math. 
as much as just adding in a couple of new conversion factors in order to be able to do some of that. Now electrolysis of water is another common place that we see electrolysis where we generate, we take water, we electrocute it, and we split it into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, now for because there are only a few ions in regular water, ions need to be added to cause the current to actually flow. So here is our overall um, <coughs> excuse me, reaction that we would have right here. And how we get down to this one is if you look up here, this is when it occurs in a acidified environment. This is our basic environment. And so when you get down here to the overall reaction, these two right here, we're going to get four waters. So just like we do at the end of the redox, those four are going to get canceled out, and this is going to knock it down to two, because those four of those are going to cancel out. So, All right, so that's why we have the extra ions in there. We've got the basic, and we've got the um, hydrogen ions in there. Now, if a solution contains several ions and current is added and gradually turned up, we can also figure out which ion will plate out first. So if you're looking at the three of these, um, you're going to have your silver first, okay, then your copper, and then your zinc. Okay, that'll be the third, the last one, and that's just rating those um, based on order for voltage. Okay? All right, so that does it for Chapter 15 or Chapter 17, and we'll do some practice in class.